Okay, uh, this is probably one of the more complicated parts of this program. Uh, this is where we're going to actually make it so that the missile, the, the player missile, can destroy the enemy missile, and the enemy missile can destroy the silo, uh, it destroy its target. Um, so we're going to be going through quite a lot of stuff here. Um, I suggest you, you know, pause and go back and, and you know, just kind of read through the code a bit. Um, like I said, this is not uh, super beginner-friendly uh, tutorial. This is a bit more complex. Um, but conceptually, it's not that complicated. Just a lot of little things to keep track of. So let's take a look at what it looks like when it runs. Okay, so I've got my missile coming in. It's got a little trail now. If I click this, I can shoot at it. Boom. And they're destroyed. Or I can also miss, miss it and let it do its thing. So let's say I'm going to shoot here. Oh, I missed it. Delay. Boom. And it's going to keep going. And destroy my city. You notice up here I've got cities and silos. Keep, I'm keeping track of that now. Okay. So let's just kind of roll through and, and take a look at what code does what. So I'm just going to kind of go down through an order here. Um, so one thing you'll see now that's been added uh, is the city class now has a destroy method. Okay. So basically, so when, I, so when I destroy the city, it clears itself, which means it basically clears it off the screen. Uh, make sure that the pen is up, because uh, this, again, this is based on the turtle module. So the pen is down, it will draw a line when it moves. We don't want to draw a line. So it's going to go to 2000, 2000, which is just off the screen. So it still exists in, in the Python memory. Um, but uh, basically we can't see it anymore and sets the state to none. So that means we can't launch it, we can't do anything with it. It is basically out of our, you know, out of our range now. Um, again, the cities don't do anything on tick, we just pass, keep that as it is. Uh, so once I've got this destroy method, I'm going to be using the same method for all of my different uh, game objects here. So I basically got that working once and then I made sure that uh, it worked with everything. So Now in this one I actually just put the code here. Um, I could have made a destroy one. I probably should have. It would have been better. Uh, yeah, I did that here. So actually I should probably update this, but since I didn't before I'll leave it as it is because uh, the code in the next couple examples are based on this already. I've already made them. So anyway, um, so basically this gives me a way of hiding an object from the screen when I don't need it anymore. Um, so next thing is uh, with the player missile I've created a new variable called size so that was the 0 0.2 which is what we use in the shape size method to resize it so this will come in handy later when we're calculating distances uh, of the explosion okay. uh, we set the target ah, okay one thing that you'll find um, setting the target is if the dx is 0, uh, this is just a mathematical thing, you can get a divide by 0 error uh, when you're calculating the uh, the, the slope. Because if dx self.dx is 0, you're going to get uh, a mathematical error. It's impossible to divide by 0. So basically, I just put this in here. If self.dx equals 0, change it to 0 0.01. So that shouldn't change you know, its destination appreciably. Uh, you won't even notice it. Because uh, I ran into that problem a couple times, and that's the fix for it. Um, again, uh, explode. This is no different than what we explained in the last video. Um, the only thing that's different is I use the self size to represent the frame uh, size and everything. So if you recall, uh, previously, the basic size is 20 pixels. So if I'm on frame 10, 10 divided by 10 is 1. So that means it's going to be 20 by 20 pixels. Uh, if I'm on frame 5, that's going to be half, so that's 10. So this is basically going to give us the size of the object. And that's what we really need to know to uh, calculate distances and things. So I would just copy that down. Um, let's see, did I change anything here? Um, and when it's ticked, uh, in our tick method, if we launch it, we need to make sure the pen is down so it leaves that nice little trail. Um, this hasn't changed, uh, that hasn't changed, and that hasn't changed. That's the same from the last time. Um, 
And then enemy missile, same thing we did here, size, because um, we're going to need that information later. Uh, but I think basically everything else is pretty much similar. Um, here I did actually change using a target X and a target Y, because uh, we're going to need that as well later. Um, so, ooh, the frame starts on 2, I'm not sure why, but it seems to be working, so let's not uh, mess with it. Sorry, I, I programmed this a while back and just, just now had uh, time because uh, uh, work was canceled today because of the, the weather. It's a snow day. And then uh, that's the same. That's the same. Destroy. We talked about that earlier. Yeah. Okay, I think so far so good. Uh, now, what we got to do, this is where it kind of gets interesting, uh, is I have created city one, silo one, because eventually we're going to have six cities and three silos. I have created player missile one because eventually we're going to have multiple player missiles. I have created enemy missile one because we're going to eventually have lots of enemy missiles. And for enemy missile one, I have set the target to city one. So this is different from the last program. So you need to make sure you make those changes or download this as it is. Um, here, what I've done is I've actually created a list of the cities. Now I've only got one for now, but later, of course, I'm going to have more. So I made it. Cities, because it's a list of cities. Silos, it's a list of silos, etc. So, uh, and then I've also created something called a status label. And this is an SPGL object. And what it does is it draws information on the screen. Um, so here is the text string that's going to draw. Here is the color. And here is the XY coordinate. So that's something new for this one. Now this is where it gets interesting. Now this all the stuff down here at the bottom uh, is brand new, so I'm just going to walk you through it line by line. So for player missile in player missiles, what that does is it goes through every missile on this list. Now of course right now there's only one, but later we'll have two, three, four. Actually, it's going to be 30 missiles. Um, for each of those missiles, we need to iterate through each of the enemy missiles. So if I've got 30 player missiles and two enemy missiles, that's going to be 60 calculations. Because I need to check every player missile versus every enemy missile. Uh, and if there's two enemy missiles, that's 2 times 30. Okay, so this is, this, is where your, this is where computer science comes in. There's ways to speed that up and play around with it. But that's the gist of it. Um, we, could, we could do some things to, uh, how can I say it? optimize it, but uh, for now we'll just leave it the way it is. And so for check all those objects against each other. Now if the player missile state is explode, okay, if it's ready, it does it's not gonna harm the enemy missile. If it has no state, like it's done, it's not gonna harm the enemy missile. Um, so if it is uh, what was the other state? I forgot what it was. Launched. If it's launched it cannot hurt the enemy missile. It can only hurt the enemy missile if it is in the explode state. So this is where the radius comes in really handy. Or sorry, that size thing comes in really handy. So we need to calculate the radius of the explosion. And that's where the size, as I said, it was the size times 20. So the size is 1, that's 20, is the width. And then 20 divided by 2 will give us the radius, because it's a circle. Okay. Then then we're saying that we're using the Pythagorean theorem. So if the player missile x-coordinate minus the missile x-coordinate, uh, so that's our a and b, uh, that's just the math, you take the square root of a squared plus b squared. So if that distance is less than the radius of the explosion, then we destroy the enemy missile. So it's best to just, you know, go back, listen to that again. Um, again, we're just using the Pythagorean theorem here to calculate the distance. If that distance is less than the radius of the explosion that we calculated, so it's the center of each object to the center of the other object, if the centers are close enough, then we destroy the enemy missile, because the player missile destroys the enemy missile. Um, so if you can get that to work, then it's basically the exact same thing. So check to see if the enemy missile collides with the cities or silos. So for every enemy missile, check for every city. Same thing, if the state is exploding and the radius is you know, where it needs to be, destroy the city and remove the city. Ah, and remove it, f that city, from the cities list. So this is the remove method. 
and that will remove something from a list. Because now, once it's destroyed, we don't need to calculate it anymore. Um, and then the same thing here. So it's basically the exact same code. I'm sure I could have uh, you know, made a nice little function out of that. I probably should have. Uh, but this kind of walks you through all the different steps that are necessary. And then, as the last part of our while true loop, our, our main game loop, we want to just update the status label. Okay, so the score uh, is the game score. We haven't actually done anything with the score. We'll do that later. The number of cities is the length of the list. So if I've got one city on the list, then the length is one. If I've got one silo, then the length is one. Okay, so let's take a look at that one more time. Hopefully that made some sense. So you see cities one, silos one, and I'll let it destroy that. And city zero, if I still have one silo. Okay, so that was that was kind of the meat and potatoes of the game. Um, basically, once you have this, it's just a matter of adding more objects and you know adding score and deleting the score and changing levels and stuff. I've, I'll have a couple more videos come up about that, but for right now, this is a pretty good place to. Uh, you know, really try and get up to and go through the videos and understand what's happening. Uh, yeah, that's about that.